knowing that you are here amongst us. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence in our life. We thank you for being our rock and our salvation and the one that we can put our hope and trust in. So we know, Lord, that you promise to do great things in our life. And you will never, ever give up on us. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, before you find a seat, why don't you turn, find someone whose name you don't know, and introduce yourself this morning. It's a great way to start. <laughs> some cards. I would love it if you would take one of those from them, fill that out, and then at the end of our time together, you can turn those in up front to the offering boxes up here, or there's one in the back. Uh, You can turn that in with any offerings that you might have as well. Uh, Any prayer requests you have, you can add on there. Any art you'd like to draw on the back, that is always welcome as well. Perfect. Lots going on for that. Just a few things uh, we're going to highlight. First off, this is our last Wednesday Night Alive coming up this Wednesday. So even if you haven't been to any of them, you should still come to this one, right? It's going to be, I know, I know, but wait, there's more, there's more. So we're doing pizza this coming Wednesday. There will be a special Wednesday Night Alive uh, in December where we're going to have the live Charlie Brown Christmas music, all kinds of stuff. That's going to be super fun. And then we are definitely bringing this back in January, January, February, and March. We've had so much fun. We're doing it again. It actually might uh, affect other things because uh, this has been such a cool thing. So make sure you come and join us uh, this last Wednesday, uh, even if you didn't get to any of the others because it's uh, for Oh, how'd that get up there? <laughs> That's so weird. All right. <laughs> Uh, it is uh, it is a three day weekend, and so it's it's an opportunity to uh, to be able to highlight uh, some some cool things uh, that are going on. Uh, one of which is the reason for our three day weekend. Of course, we know at Hope we have always been fortunate uh, to have folks uh, who have served in uh, the military as part of our community. Uh, if you would, if uh, if you're comfortable uh, standing up and introducing yourselves and uh, sharing where you serve, that'd be great. So, Joe, any others that we have at this service? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. Joe, do you want to introduce yourself? Joe? <laughs> Go Bob here first.
Awesome. I think that's it. Wonderful. We had uh, some folks at the first service, too. Uh, again, we are uh, thankful, truly, all of us, uh, and humbled by your service. Uh, appreciate that. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it got me thinking about, um, yeah, the the importance of uh, what you have done and, and, and that. Um, it uh, really helps, again, highlight uh, what I think a lot of America is built on, uh, serving and serving others, uh, the sacrifices that folks make. Uh, and that's uh, one thing uh, that we can do here at Hope as well, and in, in a small way, um, uh, certainly not uh, to the level that, uh, that all of you have done, but uh, there are some cool ways for us to serve, and we want to highlight some of those uh, here coming up uh, as well. So uh, first off, I want to say, uh, again, thanks to all of you, and then uh, thanks to some folks that helped cut down some trees yesterday. So uh, we appreciated that. We took down three big trees uh, yesterday. Some folks are here uh, that were able to, to do that. Let's, uh, so Chris uh, was uh, helping out with that, and then Corey, right? Where are you, Corey? I see you there, back over there. Uh, what's fantastic, Phil? All right, is Phil here? No, very good. Dave in the back. Um, and then, yeah, we had uh, Brent and Bonnie earlier, uh, Robbie and Jack. I'm a little concerned we haven't seen either Pete nor Matt. Does anybody? <laughs> they made it, right? They did? Well, actually, I left Pete in the park. You left before? All right, well. Matt drove away. All right, Matt was still at least ambulatory. So, um, very good. Uh, if you did not, if you are a wood burner, um, if you've got a wood burning stove, heat your house through wood. Again, there's uh, some really great wood over there. Please just go and take it. That's why it's there. I uh, would love uh, for folks to do that here in this next week. That'd be fantastic. So thank you guys for serving that way. Next, you can serve through the sock and mitten tree. We're super excited about this. The Everett Gospel Mission. Uh, we connected with them. They said yes. There's absolutely need for uh, fresh socks, gloves, and mittens during this season. And so we're going to have a fake Christmas tree here at Hope that we want decorated just with socks and mittens. Please go and buy some, and then we'll decorate the tree, and then after the Christmas season, we'll give all those to the Everett Gospel Mission. We thought that'd be a, a fun way of uh, highlighting that, so uh, we'll be doing that. You can serve through hospitality. Diane, right there, would love to talk to you about uh, helping out with hospitality. It's such a blessing. It's such a cool thing, and uh, the, the more folks that are able to do that, the more we are all blessed by that. Uh, so, yes, if uh, you've ever had a cookie or a donut, <laughs> you should talk to Diane. Uh, and then another way to serve, we're super excited about this, July 2nd to the 9th, those are our tentative dates, but uh, they'll be right around there. We're going to do a mission trip to Mexico, and we're going to have a, a meeting about that today, right after church. So, about 11.45 or so, if you'd like to be part of that conversation, we would love that. You can find out more about it, what it might cost, all those things. This is just an introductory uh, meeting, so come and be a part of that today, uh, right after church. Uh, we're super excited about that coming up. One other opportunity to, uh, to serve, um, we're, uh, we're going to be hosting a funeral here on Saturday uh, for uh, Ann Murphy. We are... Um, uh, again, always honored to, to be able to help in that way. Uh, and we would love to be able to help the family as well by providing uh, just some uh, finger food, some uh, cookies, some things like that for after the service uh, as well. So if you're able to bake something uh, for that and help out with that and bring that on Saturday, that would be a real blessing. Uh, the service will be at 1, uh, so you can bring things ahead of time. Again, you can talk to Diane, uh, who's going to be coordinating that uh, this coming Saturday at 1. All right, that's it for me, but Kendall would like to tell you about another opportunity to serve as well.
Perfect. Thanks, Kendall. We're going to dismiss our Kids for Kids Club at this time. So fifth grade and younger, if you want to meet up with your Kids Club leaders in the back, that would be fantastic. And it is the second Sunday of the month, and so we try to highlight different mission opportunities on that day. We're very fortunate to have my friend Paul share a little bit today. So Paul, come on up. You can get that situated if you need to. I'm making loud noise here. Sorry. Perfect. (laughs) I love a noisy church. That's so fun. Perfect. Good. Uh, So, uh, Paul, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Paul McClintock. Well, that works out super well. Good. I used to live right down the street in Everett, and I uh, used to be the chairman at uh, Martha Lake Covenant Church uh, in Linwood. Uh, We closed the church a couple of years ago, and uh, Renew Church is there now. Yeah, it's fantastic. So good to have you here. Uh, you're going to be sharing with us about the Gideons. Ah, the Gideons. I swear I've heard that before. I think I've seen it. Where have I seen that, Paul? You've probably seen a Gideon Bible in a hotel room. Ah, there you go. That's right. You may have seen a little New Testament handed to you as a kid at school. Ah, pretty cool. Pretty cool ministry that you guys do. We heard uh, some fun stuff about it already. Uh, Thank you for sharing a little bit about it with us today. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. In March, Gideon Frank Rudd helped to distribute scriptures in Indonesia. Here's his report. <clears throat> the team I was on primarily went to schools. Some of the schools had Christianity classes. One school had one Bible. The other schools had none. One teacher was very eager to welcome us into her classroom. After we shared the gospel and distributed scriptures to students, she pulled our team aside, clearly wanting to show us something. She pulled out a testament that she had received from the Gideons as a little girl. You could tell it was highly cherished. She always kept it with her. She told us that it was through this testament that she had come to accept Christ as her Savior. She credits her salvation to the work of the Gideons International, something eternally treasured. We have 27 Gideons, uh, Gideon men and 11 wives in the auxiliary in Everett. This includes Drew L. Ellison and his wife, Becky, and we are lay men, Christian business and professional men, members of local churches who love the Lord Jesus and work together to serve him. Last year, Everett Gideons and Auxiliary distributed 1,450 scriptures in the Everett area. 586 were to the families coming for Christmas gifts from Toys for Tots. The other 864 scriptures were placed or distributed at Everett schools, hotels, county jail, and over 60 medical offices, including clinics and dental facilities. Look at your dentist's office next time you go. Thank you for your continued partnership with us, praying for open doors and hearts and helping purchase scriptures that we can distribute. uh, This past summer, Gideons from several countries joined efforts for a scripture blitz in northwest Peru. Andreas, a Gideon from Germany, and a team went to a local supermarket to buy water. On the way... They encountered four young men. At the encouragement of Andreas, Mark Olson, a Gideon from Illinois, offered each of the young men a testament. They accepted. But when the team got back to the hotel, Mark had this strong inclination they should go back, and they did. And they found the four young men reading their New Testaments. They felt led to walk the boys through the plan of salvation The young men accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior and signed the back page of their testaments as evidence of the decision they had just made. Mark Olson, the one who had given those testaments, also had the opportunity to strike up a conversation with Raul, a waiter at the restaurant at the hotel. 
Raul was open to meeting with Mark after work at the courtyard one evening, and after talking about God's design and purpose for their lives, uh, he shared the gospel with, Mark, uh, with Raul, and he asked if he had uh, believed in Jesus as Savior. Raul affirmed that he believed Jesus came to save him from his sins, and he confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Thrilled with Raul's conversion, Mark encouraged him to find a Bible-believing church and to grow in his faith in Christ. Bill Bug, a Gideon from Colorado, and three Peruvian Gideons went to a Catholic school to share scriptures. At this school, God opened doors for Bill to share the gospel with a high school senior class through a local interpreter. The whole time Bill was speaking, the school director was standing beside him. Afterwards, he shared the gospel with the kids and asked them uh, to recite a prayer of salvation right here in the back of the, the Bible if they wanted to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Before long, the school director was reciting along with the students and accepted Jesus as his Savior. 160,000 Gideons are in 200 countries distributing millions of scriptures each year in over 100 languages. Last December marked the first shipment of the Tatar language scriptures delivered to Russia from the Gideons International. More than 5 million people in Russia speak Tatar. Gideons in Armenia visited an area in conflict and providing, uh, to provide scriptures to military bases and institutions. While they were there, they encountered Hazmat, a girl studying to become a journalist. The Gideon shared the gospel with her, and she was touched by the word of God. Armin, one of the Gideons present, exchanged phone numbers with her, and then the Gideons returned home. After some time, the Gideons returned, and Armin decided to visit her place of work. But she hadn't shown up for work that day. They felt uneasy about the situation, gave her a call, but there was no response. They tried again and again. Finally, Hasmik answered and agreed to meet with the Gideons. When she arrived, she confessed where she had been. She was at home, standing with a rope at her neck, ready to take her life. The phone started to ring suddenly, and it wouldn't stop. Hasmik heard a voice that said, Don't pick up the phone. You won't be able to finish what you started. But another voice, louder, saying, Pick up the phone. Your friends are calling. She answered the phone. Armin was on the other end. She shared about her life since she had first met the Gideons. Her parents and brothers were killed during the political unrest. She thought nobody cared, leaving her lonely and desperate. This hopelessness was all-consuming, and Hasmik could only think of escaping it by ending her life. Armin and the other Gideons told her about God's deep love for her. It took time and conversation, but Hasmik began to understand God's love for her. She re rededicated her life to the Lord and was excited to learn more about him and to hear his voice in her life. All testaments shared by Gideons include a unique help in time of need section in front. Anyone receiving one of these scriptures can use this section to easily find verses to assist with specific life issues such as being afraid, discouraged, lonely, and many more. At the back of these New Testaments are verses showing that God loves you, all are sinners, God's remedy for sin, that all may be saved now. Then there's this suggested prayer. Confessing to God that I am a sinner and believing that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins on the cross and was raised for my justification, 
I do now receive and confess him as my personal Savior. Then there's a place for them to put their name and the date of that commitment. The rest of the page encourages them to find and join a local church and to be assured from Scripture of their salvation. Over 2 billion Scriptures have been placed and distributed through the partnership of the Gideons International with evangelical churches. Each year we share millions of Bibles and pocket-sized testaments worldwide. They're provided at no charge to the facilities or to the individuals through generous donations of our members and other Christians. Some of you may want to financially partner with the Gideons, helping to purchase scriptures for distribution locally and internationally. For many, the easiest way is to go to the Gideons.org website and just follow the instructions for donating. Or you can use your bulletin insert. In addition, another common way that you can help buy scriptures for Gideons uh, to distribute is by sending a Gideon card in memory or in honor of a special person. This one, for instance, is in recognition of something like a graduation or some other achievement, in sympathy, perhaps for this Saturday, praying for you for any occasion at all, in memory, and happy birthday, Jesus, coming up. For every $5 donated, a Bible is purchased for distribution, and the recipient of the card is blessed knowing it was given in their honor. In the back over here, you have a rack where you can select these cards, or you can go online and actually order them, uh, filling in the information, and the Gideons will do the mailing and pay the postage, and uh, you just give the credit card information and all the other information online. These can be <clears throat> sent for graduations, birthdays, anniversaries, thank you cards, and as I said, for Christmas. For each card you send, you select how many Bibles you wish to purchase for the Gideons to distribute. When my aunt Opal died in Texas, I sent my cousin Alan a Gideon card in memory of his mother. He wrote me how touched he was and how he'll always think of that gift honoring his mother every time he was in a hotel room and saw a Gideon Place Bible. Last year, Everett Gideons placed Bibles in seven area hotels. But there are some hotels that won't let us provide Bibles for all of their rooms, even though it's at no cost to them. But prayer can change their unwillingness. Please pray that God will open doors and hearts to help in this work. Please pray for more men to join the Gideons to help in the work. Please pray for more Christians to give and purchase more scriptures for distribution. And please come by the Gideon table in the lobby after the service and find out more about how you can partner with the work of the Gideons and how to get the free Gideon Bible app for your smartphone. If you have a smartphone, you can also text IMPACT to 69922 which is also at the back table, and get information on your smartphone uh, that will give you uh, how to connect more with the Gideons. Thank you for your prayers and your support. God bless you. Thanks, and that is great introduction to us opening up our Bible. So if you got a Bible uh, and want to get that out, we're going to be looking at something out of Hosea. If you have a Bible app on your phone, want to take a look at that? It's also great. Otherwise, yeah, there should be a, a Bible under the chair in front of you. As well as uh, it'll be projected up on the screens too. So Hosea can be tough to find. Uh, it is in the Old Testament. It is what we call one of the minor prophets. So about two-thirds of the way through your Bible, you'll uh, see a number of books. Uh, that have some, some odd titles, uh, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, uh, Obadiah. Uh, we call uh, Hosea one of the minor prophets 
Uh, I shared this at the earlier service. I went to a seminary for four years uh, to be able to tell you the difference between the major prophets and the minor prophets. The major prophets are longer. There you go. Money well spent. All right, so uh, Hosea chapter 11 is what we're going to be looking at today. Hosea chapter 11, uh, beginning with verse 1. And then uh, the New Living Translation, it reads as this. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. But the more I called to him, the farther he moved from me, offering sacrifices to the images of Baal and burning incense to idols. I myself taught Israel how to walk, leading him along by the hand. But he doesn't know or even care that it was I who took care of him. I led Israel along with my ropes of kindness and love. I lifted the yoke from his neck, and I myself stooped to feed him. But since my people refuse to return to me, they will return to Egypt and will be forced to serve Assyria. War will swirl through their cities. Their enemies will crash through their gates. They will destroy them, trapping them in their own evil plans. For my people are determined to desert me. They call me the Most High, but they don't truly honor me. Oh, how can I give you up, Israel? How can I let you go? How can I destroy you like Adma or demolish you like Zeboim? My heart is torn within me and my compassion overflows. No, I will not unleash my fierce anger. I will not completely destroy Israel, for I am God and not a mere mortal. I am the Holy One living among you, and I will not come to destroy. We'll end our reading right there for now. Perfect, good. All right, just a bit of... A review as we jump in. What we've been doing here over the last several weeks, we'll continue all year as we're looking at what we call the narrative lectionary, and it's just a way of trying to read the Bible as a narrative story. So we've started in Genesis, and we're working our way through the Old Testament, uh, move here into the, the Christmas season, and then uh, read the, the, the story of Jesus. Uh, and again, we can't uh, get all of the Bible uh, in just our time here on Sunday mornings, but our hope is that you start to see these pieces and how they build one on another uh, from week to week. And so uh, hopefully you saw that here here again. If you're here last week, you know we talked about the false god Baal, and we just heard about him again and um, where we are at. Uh, we are actually uh, talking about what has happened to Israel when it split into two different kingdoms. And so we've got the northern kingdom that it was uh, first initially ruled by Jeroboam and had ten tribes that were part of it. And then the southern kingdom, uh, Judah, that had uh, two tribes uh, being ruled by Rehoboam. Last week we talked about uh, a conflict that was going on in the northern kingdom with Elijah and the, the king and the false god of all and all that. We're going to stay up there in the northern kingdom in Israel with what we're going to be looking at today with Hosea. Now, and again, Hosea is a prophet called by God to speak to the king and the whole kingdom at that time. Um, And if you heard what we talked about last week and if you've ever spent some time in the Bible and have heard about the prophets and you've thought to yourself, man, that would be a cool job. I would love to be a prophet. That would be so much fun to be able to, to speak power or speak truth to power because that's what's going on. The prophets, again, had this incredible ability because they're called by God and somehow everyone knows that and sees that. They can speak truth to power. They can go up to the king. They can go up to to all kinds of different people and challenge directly that. And you're thinking to yourself, man, that would be so fun to to be able to speak that, to speak as God to people around you, to be able to say to them, that was not your parking spot. That was mine, you know, and for people to hear that and then to to have to move. Like, you can think, it's a man, it'd be fun to be a prophet. Hosea is here to tell you, stay in school, kids. Mm -mm. Don't want this job. You do not want this job. Being a prophet is a tough, tough, brutal calling and a brutal way of life. And Hosea's story tells that perhaps more than anybody else's. So, We're going to look at that today. Um, Impossible to look at all of Hosea's uh, life or his message, um, but in many ways, actually, his life is his message, and so we want to touch on that just a little bit uh, as we kind of understand what's going on. Uh, See, what God does specifically with Hosea as he calls Hosea to be his prophet, he actually wants Hosea to live his life as, as part of his prophetic story, that, that as not only is Hosea speaking for God, Hosea is actually living out essentially what God has been living out with God's people, with uh, the nation Israel. And so it begins by calling Hosea to marry specifically an unfaithful woman. 
to marry an unfaithful woman, often actually considered a, a prostitute. And um, I'll just be blunt, that there's actually a, a long side conversation we could have about that um, uh, and about uh, that uh, particular role of, of Jose's wife, Gomer, and, and how that plays out. Um, it's, a, it's a worthwhile conversation, but takes us a little off point uh, for today. Uh, so just um, hear that, that, that again, uh, God specifically calls Hosea to, to marry uh, an unfaithful woman and that she will continue to be unfaithful to Hosea. Uh, and everyone sees this and everyone knows this and everyone says, Hosea, why did you marry this particular woman? Why do you keep taking her back as she uh, continues to be unfaithful to you? And Hosea says, that's exactly it. That's the story. That's the point. That God is the faithful one, and we, all of us, are the unfaithful one, and God continues uh, to have to live in this world. Um, And so that's going on. And then it it, uh, continues, actually, um, with with his own kids uh, from there. See, the the thing is, um, I think part of, at least part of the reason for this... I don't know about you, I, I know, I feel this all the time. Part of the, my challenge when I, I think about God and when I try to understand God is that God seems so big, he seems so other, that I have a hard time understanding exactly, one, why he wants to have a relationship with me. I have a hard time understanding why God would ever listen to me, why he would hear my prayers, why he would answer my prayers. Who am I that uh, he would ever want to do that? God is, is you know, the creator of the universe, and, and I'm nothing compared to all that. That's a challenge. I admit, for me, a number of times. Um, And so I think part of why God does this with Hosea is he wants to give us an image that makes sense, right? He's like, "Uh, no, see, yes, yes, I'm God. Yes, I'm the creator of the universe. But I'm also just, you know, a, a father that... Uh, feels this way about my kids. I'm a spouse that feels a way this way about my spouse. That's how I am. And, and so God is trying to, to have Hosea live something out to where we might see that life and, ma- and make sense to us. You know, we see Hosea uh, with his, his unfaithful wife and all, our heart breaks for that, to which God says, yes, that's it. That's me. Your heart should break because that's what's going on. And when we see God um, and uh, or Hosea, particularly with his relationship with his kids, and, and there's some tragic aspects to it, to which God yeah, is on the side going, yes, that's it. That's how I, that's how I feel. That's where I hit. Um, because, yeah, with, uh, with the kids, it's a remarkable story. Um, uh, Hosea has uh, three different kids. Um, as part of this, names his first kid uh, Jezreel, Jezreel, um, and that's actually, a child is named after a place where uh, some horrible, awful, big sins had been committed, and so Jezreel is named specifically to remind the people of all those sins. And then the next two kids are named Not Loved and Not My Child. And you didn't like your name, right? Can you imagine that? And this, uh, this is one of those things. It's, uh, I find this uh, quirk kind of going on in our world today. I, I don't know if uh, you see this as much as I do, but uh, people seem to change their names a, a lot uh, right now. And uh, I got to, one, it, it's kind of cool. Two, it, it, uh, it's really hard on me because, like, I work over at, at, at Cavalero, um, and so I work with these kids in eighth and ninth grade, and, you know, I kind of work with them all through eighth grade, and I finally learn their names, and I'm really proud of myself. And they come back in ninth grade, and they've got a different name, and I'm like, stop. I just learned your name. <laughs> I'm an old man. You know, I can't keep all these in my head anymore. But that, like, people uh, seem to, to do that way more in, in, in our day today. Um, and, like, we couldn't do that, right? Because uh, w- when we grew up, man, your name was, it meant something. You were named after someone, right? How many of you, your name, you were named after someone specifically, Right? Yeah. I mean, that, so many of us, that was it. Like, there was a meaning behind that name. And you couldn't just change it. You were named after your father. You were named after your aunt. You were named after the greatest point guard in the game of basketball. You know, they're, so they're, they're all those, they're all those things about, you know, why your, your name is. And so that's Hosea. You know, Hosea gives these names to his kid because, again, he's living out this life for all the world to see and to say, this is God, how God sees all of us as kids, as these people that have done this, this horrible, awful sin and that they are not loved and not his children. And if that were all the story, again, it would just be an, an awful, tragic one, but that's not where it ends. Uh, it kind of leads to, to this part that we, we talk about uh, right here in um, Hosea chapter 11, and it's this 
Uh, actually, a, a little poetic moment. It's telling a, a bit of poetry here um, that is meant to draw us in and to help us, uh, again, just be challenged by something. For those of us who are parents, and I know not everyone here is, but um, I'm curious for those of us who are parents how this uh, part of the story hits you. Because what it's saying is it's talking about how uh, God sees all of us as his children and how we have continued to fall away from him and how we have continued to, to, to fall after and, and worship false gods and other gods and Baal and this and that and how we don't want to have this special relationship with God anymore. We want to follow this God and we want to do these things over here. And so th- there's this setup, uh, essentially, of God as, as, as father seeing that in his kids and the kids doing all these bad and terrible, awful things. And in this time period especially, they have gotten to the point where the father is just able to say, well, I'm done with you. I want nothing to do with you ever again. And, and again, I, um, I have four kids, and uh, they're incredible, and I can't even imagine um, ever getting to this point of feeling this way. But I know there are folks that have, and, and I guess the way that I think about it, I think all of us maybe have had something like that, some challenge like that, probably somewhere in our family, maybe a sibling or again, a cousin, aunt, uncle, maybe even a parent where you can get to that point where you just have to say, you know what, I, I have to be done with you. Because of what you're doing, because of perhaps an addiction or because of something that you continue to find yourself in, for my own health, I need space. I have to be done with you. I can't do this anymore. And it's, it's an awful thing and it's a horrible feeling. That's what's being said here. That's Hosea's story, that at this point, the kids have done so much wrong over and over and over again that no one would blame the father for saying, I'm done. I can't. I can't do this again. And if that were all of Hosea's story, that would be it, but it's not. And it really uh, jumps out to me in in one particular verse here towards the end is, is again, Hosea is making this case and talking about these things, and anybody who's hearing it, particularly in that time, is hearing this and saying, yes, of course, you have to be done. You've got to walk away. But if you're a a note taker in your Bible, this would be what I'd underline in verse 9. It says this, but no, I will not unleash my fierce anger. I will not completely destroy Israel. Here's what I underlined, for I am God and not a mere mortal. For I am God and not a mere mortal. Because that's it. There is nothing we can do That is going to hurt God. There is nothing we can do that's going to make God feel unsafe. There's nothing we can do that God is going to say, well, that's just gone too far. I can no longer forgive that. See, because he's God and not a mere mortal. When God looks at us, at his children, and all the things that we have done, and all the mistakes that we have made, and all the times that we have pushed him away, and all the times that we've gone after false God, after false God, and after false God, where any other person, any other mere human father or mother would say, that's it, I've got to be done, and everyone on the outside would say, we agree, that is just ridiculous, you cannot do any more, but he is God, and not a mere mortal. And he says, no, no, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up on you. I'm not going to give up on you, and I'm not going to give up on you. Because I don't care what you've done. I don't care how many times you've fallen away. I will still love you, and I will still forgive you, and I will still welcome you back home into my family because you are my child. And that's Hosea's story. He changes his kids' names at the end. Changes them back to loved and to my child. Because that's Hosea's story. 
He's living this out for the whole world to see. And everyone sees that at the end. You know what? Any normal father, any normal mother, they would have been done so long ago. But he's God and not a mere mortal. And he will always, always love and forgive you. I would bet all of us need to hear that from time to time. This is a day that you need to hear it. I hope you do loud and clear. There is a God in heaven who loves you. And you are welcome always in his family. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for that message that we give and welcome us home. May we know that to be true. In your name we pray. Amen.
Uh, go ahead and uh, find your seats uh, for this. Oh, perfect. Good. All right. As, uh, as we wrap up, yeah, if, uh, again, if you've got any offerings, we're blessed by that. Uh, you can uh, bring those up front. Um, if uh, you have an offering to, to give to the Gideons as well, that's great. Make sure you talk to, to Paul and or Drew uh, afterwards. They'll be out there. I'd love to, to share a little bit more about uh, that ministry that's going on. If there's an opportunity for you to serve somewhere, I encourage you to think about that uh, and do that. Uh, I think that's a, a great thing. And, yeah, go out of your way to, to thank one of our veterans as well. Uh, Joe's story uh, we mentioned earlier is uh, particularly unique. Today is Joe's birthday, right? And it is the also... Right? Uh, that's good. But no, it gets better because it's also the birthday for the core, right? So together, you are how old? 319 years old. 319. He looks good, right? I know. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, he's up here singing in front of everyone, so... Let none of that hold you back. Uh, we're, we'll have the Mexico meeting here in probably uh, 10, 15 minutes in your office, Dave. Is that uh, all right? The Mexico meeting? Yes? Good. Perfect. Unbeknownst to Dave, we're going to have the office uh, in his, uh, we're going to have the meeting in his office. Uh, it's just down here. Uh, it's just an introductory meeting. Again, you're not uh, necessarily signing up. Uh, but if you just want to find out more about it, come do it. We're, uh, we're super excited about that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think... That is it. Uh, we will uh, see you back here next week. We close our worship service with a reminder of who it is we are, what we're all about. Don't just go to church. Be the church. Amen.